Hot, dry, and windy, the perfect equation for out-of-control wildfires and threats of many more as the wildfire season gets underway. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. And welcome to News 3. I'm Shara Kimiko in for Sue Manteras. As the hot Nevada summer gets into full swing, so does the threat of the wildfires. Yeah, here in southern Nevada, in our area, we're dealing with the serious fire danger in the Spring Mountains and in surrounding lower elevations as well. But the situation is much worse in northern Nevada. Hundreds of firefighters are battling a wildfire that has been burning out of control for days. The blaze is burning just north of Reno, near the town of Truckee. You can see just how intense this fire is from these pictures. The flames have been moving along busy Interstate 80, and the fire is now just eight miles from Reno. You can see how tall these flames are when they're compared to some of those trees. The smoke is so thick in the city, it's causing some health concerns for people with breathing problems. Lighter winds and higher humidity are helping firefighters control the blaze. Right now, it's about 30% contained. And Scott, like you said, we are dealing with a similar but not so severe situation right here in the valley. On Mount Charleston, major fire restrictions are in effect. As Denise Roche reports, campers are being warned conditions are perfect for disaster. On his way out, the little cub saw the burnt and disfigured trees. His story has been repeated for years. This had been a big forest fire and a great loss to our country. Smokey Bear, the real-life cub who came to represent forest fire safety. And he was found in a fire and he was partially burnt. Here at the Mount Charleston Visitors Center, you can learn all about Smokey and how to protect our national forests. It begins with a few simple rules. No campfires or grills on open land. We're going to go right over here to the hilltop campground. All right. Billy Pierce has mapped out nearly a perfect camping trip for his girls. Oh, we forgot to bring the graham crackers. But the fire danger, he says, is a concern. Along with hummingbirds and wildflowers, he's noticed something else up here. In five minutes, the fire warnings changed from very high to extreme. As long as you're in the designated area and you're at the fire pit, you can burn your own wood or buy wood. But as green and lush as the forest looks today, things can change in an instant. And there's a lot you can learn from the old trees that have been cut down up here. This one began growing in 1367. Right about here, Columbus discovers America. Up here, the Revolutionary War. But take a look over here, this big black patch. It shows how this old tree once survived a forest fire. There's a heightened awareness with the community. Over at Fire Station 1, the crews and the trucks are on standby, ready for any signs of trouble. We're in the wrong part of the country for another bear rescue. The man carried the little cub through the burnout forest that was once his home. But not for the lessons he taught us. You see the signs says burned out? Look at it, all gone. Denise Rosh, News 3. Firefighters on the mountains say they have been responding to abandoned campfires on a daily basis. So far, none of the fires have gotten out of control, but they say the danger there is every time. Because the threat of fire is so severe, fire departments in Las Vegas as well as North Las Vegas are looking for more firefighters. If you have EMT certification, a valid driver's license, as well as a high school diploma, you can sign up at an information seminar, which is tonight. It is at the West Las Vegas Library on West Lake Mead. That begins at 6 o'clock tonight. He pleaded guilty to drunk driving and crashing into a Las Vegas fire captain. Now Dorian Gaba is headed to jail. Gable was sentenced yesterday and will now spend the next 2 to 12 years behind bars. He will also have to pay $3,500 in restitution. He will begin serving his sentence Friday morning. Captain Nathan Pahacek was critically injured in that crash but has since recovered and is now back on work, at work on full duty. Captain Bahacek was lucky to survive that crash, but too often the ending is more tragic. Local police officers are doing everything they can to keep the roads safe. These Metro officers attended a class on DUI assessment yesterday, learning how to give field sobriety tests and detect those drunk drivers. Today, media representatives are attending the special clinic as well.
Coming up tonight on First News 3 at 4, you'll see the drunk driving simul simulation in a controlled environment. It'll show you how just a little alcohol can impair your driving skills. The only way you can get a job at a Nevada casino is with a work card, but those cards may soon become a thing of the past. Local unions argue the cards are not necessary for workers like waitresses, janitors, and cooks. On June 27th, the Clark County Commission will consider revising current work card requirements to include those exemptions. The American Civil Liberties Union is reportedly considering a suit against the county concerning work cards. The ACLU says the cards are unconstitutional. One local applicant agrees it's time for a change. It does seem unnecessary. I don't really understand why the purpose. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I don't really understand it. In addition to a sheriff's work card, many people also need to get at least two other cards to get a job at a casino. If you're going to work in an area where food is served, you will need to pay $30 for a health card. This includes a TB skin test, and you must also attend a class and pass a test on food handling. Also, if you work around alcohol, you will need to pass a test on the techniques of alcohol management to receive a TAM card, which costs $15. How would you feel if a college went up in your backyard? People living in Henderson voiced their opinion to city leaders about a proposed college there. The Nevada State College has been on the drawing board for some time now, but many residents don't want it in their neighborhoods. So they attended a public hearing last night to debate the proposal. One proposed location is near Mission Hills in southeast Henderson. Many people are worried, however, it will destroy their community. We don't have streetlights in our area. We don't have curb and gutter. Uh, we don't have wide roads. Uh, it's a very rural area. And as a consequence, the college program, with its high-density population, uh, poses a threat. You Others say they are not against the college, but think many fast food restaurants and other businesses could crop up as a result. The city council, however, ended up approving the sale of 73 acres, paving the way to bring the college to Henderson. Government investigators are now analyzing new information that indicates Ford is replacing Firestone tires with tires that have higher failure rates. The information was disclosed at a congressional hearing Tuesday at which Ford and Firestone squared off over public safety. Robert Hager reports. As Ford releases pictures of testing, what tread separations look like. A House subcommittee calls top execs, Ford's Jack Nasser and Firestone's John Lampy, to hear a new charge from Congressman Billy Tozen. Ford is going to replace these recalled tires with tires that have a worse claims history than some of the tires that are coming off the Explorers. Others, skeptical, demand Tozen make the data public. I mean now, Mr. Chairman. Pursuant to the gentleman's not, not at the whim of the chair or at some later time, but now. But Tozen insists the evidence first needs to be reviewed by the government. While Ford says it was assured the replacement tires were safe and wanted to get them on vehicles as soon as possible. It was a question of do we keep testing, do we keep studying, do we keep reviewing, or do we go out there and act in the interest of our customers? As for Firestone, is the current replacement program even necessary? No, sir, it's not. The tires that they're replacing are perfectly safe tires. Leaving the public as confused as ever. Just as the roughest time for tires, the summer season of long drives and hot pavement is coming on fast now. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. Federal regulators say they'll decide this summer whether to launch a formal investigation into the safety of Ford Explorers. Well, it is hot outside. There is no debating that. And who knows if we'll have any reprieve in that. John Fredericks, Probably of course. Not. Probably <laughs> not, Johnny. John, give us good news, please. Are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm begging. Oh, begging. Okay. Uh, stick around a couple months, Shara. We'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help you out right somewhere toward the end of September. Folks, th the official beginning of summer is not even till tomorrow. We're already just shy of 100 degrees out of McCarran as uh, we look from our beautiful Mandalay Bay cam. And it is getting a bit hazy out there as well. We're starting to see a little bit more dust kind of filtering in the valley. 98 degrees, 14 percent humidity, a light easterly breeze and falling barometric pressure. How hot is it going to get? pretty much the same as yesterday and it's really not going to change a whole lot but the good news is we've got the Fredericks fact I want to give you a chance to win some and a live studio audience all coming up right here on News 3 at noon Shara Scott all right all right thank you John one of your favorite superstores may actually be in the limelight and headed to court coming up find out why the retail store Walmart is finding itself in trouble once again
I really love it. I'm, I can't believe it only took an hour to do it. And how about brighter, wider teeth in just an hour? Later find out how it's becoming possible coming up on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. I'm Beth Fisher. People crack jokes about PMS, but if you're the one suffering, you're not laughing. If I would snap at my husband, snap at my little boy. Doctors say it could be something worse. How one woman has taken control today at 4. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at noon. Welcome back. Another lawsuit against retail giant Walmart. The government is going to bat for an employee of a Walmart Sam's store in Delaware who says her manager mocked her British origins. The suit claims Susan Taylor was subjected to a non-stop stream of abusive treatment and racial slurs by her supervisor, who is also a woman. Meanwhile, the retail giant is also accused of sex discrimination in another lawsuit. If that suit is granted class action status, it will represent as many as 500,000 current and former workers and become the nation's largest sex discrimination case against a private employer. The Justice Department might have a surprising new stance on the tobacco lawsuit. The word is a settlement is possible. Cigarette manufacturers, health advocates, and lawmakers were caught off guard by word the Justice Department is considering settling its lawsuit against the tobacco industry. Some health advocates said they were worried the administration will not seek a strong settlement, and tobacco companies signaled they were not about to charge to the settlement table. Philip Morris, the nation's largest cigarette manufacturer, reiterated in a statement the lawsuit was, quote, without merit. Have you ever had troubles with your love life? Well, we won't go there, but coming up, learn how doctors... Everyone does, okay. though. You have ups and downs, right? Sure. Got to learn how to deal with them. Mm. But now doctors found a hormone that they say can help improve your relationships. <laughs> See? Okay, sure. Let that one slide right by. Your complete forecast and the Fredericks Fact, it's up next here on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. This is your three-view preview with Jim Snyder. People either love him or hate him. Either way, Geraldo Rivera is on Rosie today at 3. Maybe she can get the guy to lighten up a little and quit taking himself so seriously. Do you ever have days when you can't seem to lighten up? Maybe you're edgy, have trouble concentrating? Well, doctors are finding new ways to treat those down days for women. We'll tell you about that at 4. On News 3 at 5, an important step too many new parents skip and their babies end up paying the price. you like to have wider teeth in one hour? A new breakthrough technology is now making that possible. Many people use bleaching trays at home, but they can be messy, take a lot of time, and may end up not doing it properly. But with the bright smile technique, the whitening is performed in the dentist's office, and it only takes an hour. I tell my patients that we expect to see six or seven, eight shade changes. Now we're actually going to apply the gel. And when we apply the light to it, the light activates the peroxide and it lightens the teeth in a matter of an hour. This procedure, however, does not lighten any bonding or crowns. Bright Smile, however, does not have the American Dental Association seal of acceptance, although it has been submitted for approval. If you would like to find a Bright Smile dentist near you, simply call the number that is on your screen at one 877 right smile. Scientists may have pinpointed the hormone which controls how we bond to others, especially romantically. As Dr. Dina Dell reports, it could be a big step in finding out what makes people get together and stay together. For a pregnant woman, oxytocin is an essential hormone because it triggers the labor that will finally let her deliver her blessed event. During breastfeeding, it comes into play again, signaling milk production and aiding in the mother-child bond. But now it appears that this chemical, which is made right here in the pituitary gland, may have far more importance than we ever realized because a new study finds that oxytocin plays a key role in men and women and how they form relationships. In fact, some are even calling it the love hormone. We've known for a while oxytocin plays a role in sexuality because it's released during the peak of excitement. But new research suggests it may influence our ability to form and maintain interpersonal relationships as well. You okay? Mm-hmm. Good. 
As part of a groundbreaking study at University of California, San Francisco, volunteers like Shoshana were hooked up so their blood levels of oxytocin could be measured. Next, they were asked to relive different emotional moments that made them either happy or sad. Try to remember a time in your life when you felt intense feelings of love or infatuation. We found that women who were in close relationships tended to release oxytocin during these positive emotional states compared to women who were not in a relationship. Shoshana is happily married and easily accessed her emotions. I can feel the happiness. I can, I can feel that inside of me and the sadness too. The more secure subjects felt in their personal relationships, the higher the levels of oxytocin, which seemed in turn to reinforce their bond with their partners. By contrast, single people not in relationships had much lower oxytocin levels and a more difficult time with emotional openness, which leads to an obvious question. Some people have asked, do you think I could sprinkle some oxytocin in my boyfriend's cereal? <laughs> if it's truly the hormone of my monogamy. <laughs> We're not there yet, but this research suggests this underrated hormone may play a key role in keeping couples together. I'm Dr. Dina Dell. This love hormone is, of course, raising some perplexing issues, much like the old, which came first question. Scientists cannot say if oxytocin helps create the initial bonding or if it is released once people are in a relationship. If you would like more information, log on to our website at kvbc.com. What came first, the egg or the chicken? Or the chicken or the egg. Or the chicken or the egg. John Fredericks. <laughs> you don't We're going to toss in John happy. for this one. Let you Look handle. at him now. He's Why like, do I have I to follow know. those stories? <laughs> <laughs> let's say we've got we've got some wonderful teenagers here. We're going to introduce you to in a moment, but let's introduce you to the forecast. Where right now it is 98 degrees under mostly sunny skies, a few high clouds, 14% humidity, winds east at nine, barometer falling to 9.99 inches of mercury. All the way from the YMCA, here they are. Some finally, you're going to be on this camera right over here, kids. If you want to see yours. When they, there it is, right there. there All right. Is. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. What's that? Hey, Mom. There you go. All right. Okay. Oh, that was, that was okay. nice. That's, that's nice. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, currently at our uh, <laughs> WeatherNet station at the Wells Fargo at Craig. He's, that's about the way I was when I was his age. Uh, 98 degrees at uh, Craig and MLK. Anyway, we're glad to see the kids here and enjoying the summer, even though it doesn't officially start till tomorrow. Let's take a quick fly through, and we'll show you some other numbers around the valley and beyond, including uh, it's about 96 degrees right now up in Centennial Hills. Uh, it's the newest part of the valley, right about up in this area here. Come on, boy, the weather computers is moving slow. There you go, 93 at the region of Las Vegas, 100 Henderson, 99 in East Las Vegas. Your forecast for today, just like yesterday, has not changed. 106 the afternoon high expected today, although we only made it to only 104 yesterday. And uh, the record high for today, 113. So we're certainly not going to be close to that. Moderate readings of air quality, and unfortunately, we're not getting enough of a breeze to kick out the junk. So we're starting to see that. Plus, on these hot summer days, we get that inversion layer kind of traps all the junk in the valley. Talk about junk. We've got a mess across much of the rest of the nation. We're starting to see some severe weather pop up across the northern plains and also the Midwest. Along an area of low pressure, you're going to see it develop here on the jet stream. We've got a big ridge of high pressure out west warm conditions, sunny skies, an area of low pressure back east, and that's usually where you would expect to, to see the trouble, and I'll show it to you in a moment. 98 here, 99 right now in Phoenix, 87 degrees currently in New York City, 88 in Washington, and they get the humidity to boot. The uh, showers and thunderstorms continue to develop along that area of low pressure I just laid out for you in the jet stream, and some of these could be severe. We could have some uh, tornadic thunderstorms developing anywhere across the entire northern tier of states, basically from the northern plains all the way over to the Ohio Valley. Dr. Jim Siebert will have the update for you during First News 3 at 4. In uh, the town of Siren, Wisconsin, they think that that tornado the other night was an F3 on the Fujita scale with winds that could be up to 200 and six miles per hour and there's there is possibly an f5 we don't see very many of those with wind speeds well over 250 miles per hour in case you're wondering today's high temperatures very warm 
80s and 90s all the way along the eastern seaboard, 90 and steamy in New Orleans, just very hot and humid and oppressive down in Houston at 91 degrees and 93 in Dallas. Okay, let's give you a chance to win. We got stuff for you. Kids, if you know the answer to this, please don't blurt it out, okay? Actually, one of the uh, youngsters here, his mom wins from us all the time. So uh, we're going to, okay, as long as she hasn't won in 90 days, she's welcome to try again. All right, here we go. It is the only food that does not spoil. Please don't call and say water, okay? It's the only food that does not spoil. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Kids heard of Sheena Easton? Yeah, sure. She's a superstar, and she's over at the Hilton, and then, boy, you talk about the reviews coming in. I got two tickets to go see Sheena Easton at the Hilton and dinner for two over at Tony Roma's. They got a brand new location at Sahara and Decatur. Please call us now. Dial carefully at 657-3425. We will have your correct answer coming up in the next half hour. Shara, Scott? We can see them over there asking the chef. The food what specialist. Food? What, what do you think it is? And he, I don't know. <laughs> he knows. All right. It has been said that investing your money is a little bit like gambling. Of course. That happens right? here in the Valley occasionally. How can you make your money back, though? <laughs> Coming up, our financial expert is here to show us how. And later, find out what caused this chopper to make an emergency landing. That's still ahead on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. You hear a lot of people ask, what's wrong with kids these days? And it's easy to understand why they might say that. It seems like every time you pick up a newspaper or turn on the news, you see negative stories about young people. But the truth is, there are just a few kids doing the wrong things who are grabbing all the headlines. But it turns out in Southern Nevada, there are hundreds of stories of kids who are making a positive difference in our community. That's why I decided to find out what's right with kids. As part of putting kids first, Kendall Tenney asks, what's right with kids? Only on News 3. Welcome back, everyone. We're just getting ready to talk to our financial expert, Stephen Buden. And we were talking about a lot of people, of course, they were in the market. They lost a lot of money. Right. It's a gamble. And exactly. And they're wondering, okay, when do I need to get back in to make it back? Right. And I've gotten a lot of calls from investors and viewers asking me, is now the time to get rid of my dead wood, my bad investments, or not? Or when will it come back? If I sit long enough, will my portfolio come back? Right. And the answer, without being coy, is it depends really on what you have in your portfolio. But just sitting on it may not be the best course of action because losing money proportionally is much worse than making money. And it's a great look you're giving me deer in the headlights. And I'll show you with some numbers what, what I'm talking about. If you have an investment portfolio and you lose 10%, to make your money back, you need to gain 11%. 11. Okay. If you lose 20%, you need to make 25% back just to be even. Hmm. If you lose 40%, you need to gain 67% back and the internet stock investors can take pride in this one. If you lose 80%, you need to make 500% back just to break even. And there's a lot of people in those last two categories. A lot of $100 stocks went down to 20. That's an 80% drop. Right. Go back from 20 to 100 is a 500% gain. I wouldn't bet that that is going to happen, especially in this type of economy with right. the market really doing weak. So it's very important that you take a look at your holdings see what is a good company, what's not a good company, and it may just be worth it to bail out, take your tax loss, and move on to the next investment. And also recognize what your starting point was at the beginning before right. you saw those huge gains and realize that those were gains and that where you started in the beginning and where you are now are really virtually the same. Right, and that, that's a good point too, but psychologically it's not. I mean, if you saw <laughs> that with, make it any yeah, no, If you saw that with 5,000 and it goes up to 20, and then you back down to 10, most in investors think you've lost 10,000, mm -hmm. when in effect you've really made five. But psychologically, you feel poorer because you were up to that point right. when you came back down. So it's important to keep that in perspective. Is there any little thing, any little tip that can help people make money back at all? Or is there just truly nothing? Well, it just depends. It's a good question. The government will give you some money back in the sense you can write off some of the losses. Okay. For example, if you have an IRA, you can convert it to a Roth, and the taxable income you'll owe will be lower than if you converted it at a higher price. So you're technically getting some money back that way. And you're allowed to write off your capital losses to any capital gains and then exceed that by 3000 
So it may be worth it to bite the apple, take the loss, and you can use it to offset some taxable income down the line. And the answer to your question of when is a good time to get rid of dead wood, so to speak, and the answer is now. Absolutely. Always. A bad investment's a bad investment. It doesn't matter when you get rid of it. Mm. And a good investment is good. Just because it's down doesn't mean you should get rid of it. Make sure it's the underlying investment that you're considering, not just what you paid for it. Okay. And of course, make sure you have a very good financial advisor. And recommend here's, one. there you go, yes, and we Mr. can Steve recommend Steve Buden, one. <laughs> here you go. Three ways to get in touch with Steve. You can go ahead and go to stevenbuden.com. You can call him at 990-4334, or he also checks his fax machine occasionally, 990-4336 as well. <laughs> Steve, we appreciate you stopping by. Sure. Thank you, Steve. A man sitting on death row for kidnapping and killing a Las Vegas woman 15 years ago has new hope. Find out why. It's known as the Windy City, but that name may soon change to something a little bit greener. We'll explain. And we'll tell you how you can win a $5,500 getaway to the Four Seasons Hotel in London, and all you have to do is eat. You can do that. Yeah, easy. Hi. That, of course, is coming up in the next half hour of News 3 at noon, where news comes first. I'm Beth Fisher. People crack jokes about PMS, but if you're the one suffering, you're not laughing. If I would snap at my husband, snap at my little boy. Doctors say it could be something worse. How one woman has taken control today at four. Well, we uncovered a number of things. There are multiple constitutional errors that we've alleged in our petition. A judge throws out a death penalty sentence against one of the most notorious killers in Nevada's history. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. And welcome back. I'm Sherry Kimiko sitting in for Sue Manteras. Fourteen years after he was sentenced to death row, Richard Haberstrow has received a reprieve from dying. Constitutional problems with the sentencing phase of his trial have given the convicted killer a second chance at life. Steve Krupe has this exclusive story. We, the jury in the Bob and Tito case, having found the defendant, Richard Haverstrow, guilty of murder in the first degree... And having that is what happened 14 years ago when a jury convicted Richard Haverstrow and then sentenced him to death. I didn't hurt anybody and didn't rape anybody. Despite his claims of innocence, Haverstrow was sentenced to die for kidnapping Donna Katowski at this Albertson supermarket and then raping and killing her, leaving her body in the desert. For the past few years now, it's been the job of federal public defender Michael Pachetta to help Haverstrow fight his conviction, and now a judge has finally agreed that for constitutional reasons, the penalty phase was unfair. I personally am against the death penalty unequivocally, but professionally, uh, every case that I have seen, uh, not just in Nevada, uh, has serious constitutional problems with it. Among the reasons why Haberstroh's penalty hearing may have been unfair was the fact that prosecutors told the jury that while Haberstroh was in jail, he was found carrying a sharp piece of metal, a piece of metal they said could have been used as a murder weapon to kill yet someone else. Well, during a later investigation, though, it was revealed the piece of metal was just a digging tool and that it actually belonged to a different inmate. Even though Haberstroh's sentence of death has been overturned, his guilty conviction has not. He will remain in prison until prosecutors decide what their strategy is going to be. Barring a plea agreement, a whole new penalty hearing will be needed to once again decide whether Richard Haberstroh lives or dies. Steve Krupe, News 3. Haverstrow has had two trials. The first ended with a hung jury. He is one of about 90 inmates sitting on Nevada's death row. Republicans will soon enjoy a 12-member edge in the House thanks to a special congressional election in Virginia. Republican State Senator Randy Forbes won the House seat left vacant by the death of Democrat Norman Sisiski. Forbes defeated, Forbes defeated rather Democratic challenger Louise Lucas 52 percent to 48 percent. He received a congratulatory phone call from President Bush last night as well. Forbes' victory takes some of the sting out of Senator James Jeffords' recent defection from the GOP, which cost Republicans control of the Senate. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill want to shake up the health insurance system. Right now, most Americans' health insurance is a type of HMO, which is a system where you are required to visit a doctor on a specific list. 
but that might soon come to an end. One major issue is expanding patients' rights by allowing people to sue their HMOs in state courts. It is an issue that has been tossed around for about five years now, but it's never passed. Democrats say this year is different. They control the Senate, and this is their number one issue. We are here to say that help is on its way to families across this country and that we will pass a real patient's bill of rights. Opponents of the bill say individual companies that provide workers with health insurance could end up being the target of frivolous lawsuits, but there is some motivation to reach a compromise. Lawmakers will have to stay and work out the differences, even if it means staying through the 4th of July holiday. It was a close call after a helicopter was forced to make a hard landing. Take a look at this video. As you can see from the video, the force of the landing was hard enough to tip the chopper onto its side. The pilot and the federal aviation officer both suffered minor injuries. No word yet on what caused the accident. Federal investigators are looking into the crash. Plans are in the works to bring a breath of fresh air to the Windy City. Chicago wants to be known as the greenest city in America now. City leaders want to shed its smokestack skyscraper image to become the most environmentally friendly metropolis in the land. Within five years, city leaders want at least 20% of the city's power to come from renewable sources like wind and solar power. Plans are underway to redo 15 million square feet of public buildings to make them more energy efficient. And I have to admit that uh, when I went to Chicago for the very first time, I was surprised at how green the entire Chicago area really is. Really? I mean, it is just green. It's flat, but it's green. Oh, well, besides the skyscrapers. And, it, and it's, <laughs> it's beautiful as well. We'll be right back, everyone. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at noon. And welcome back, everyone. How does a little fun in the sun sound? Here today for this week's travel special is, of course, John Berman from Prestige Travel, as well as Sandy Stevens from Renaissance Cruise. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And we are talking about cruises. Renaissance Cruise has some great specials, obviously, that are going on. We and do. tours, right? We have a great two-for-ones that are happening right now. They, um... The, the promotion will be ending on June 30th, but for almost every any destination. What are some of the best spots to go to now? Well, Tahiti's wonderful. Oh, of I mean, <laughs> Tahiti's very good. We've got I two ships no in Tahiti, and um, and it's a nice, you know, it's a nonstop flight from from Los Angeles, so it's a great way to get the sun and and um, a wonderful honeymoon destination. Of course. But we're in the Med. We're in Europe. Um, we're just about everywhere. You know, I think the most important thing right now is to let everyone know the two-for-one specials mm -hmm. that are That's on great. every destination they go to, South America, Caribbean, Tahiti, will end the end of this month. Oh, so it's through June 30th. Book. Um, can you book them now and then take the cruises later, or do you have to book them and take them now? Absolutely. You book now and go all the way through next August 2002. Oh, yeah. So you Very don't see good. that too often, that right. you can do a, you know, you can get a balcony, a veranda on one of their ships for under $1,000. That's not bad at all. Fantastic. That is not bad at all. Um, what are some of the things that people can expect on cruises that some people may have never been on? Well, one? the thing that makes our cruise line a little bit different from others is that we only have um, 700 passengers on our ships. Oh, that's nice. So as it's, well. it's a really nice size. We have open seating dining. We have four different venues that you can eat at whenever you want. I mean, it's not you're not at that first and second seating. And most of all, we don't have formal nights. We are called Country Club Casual. So you don't have to pack another suitcase just with your formal wear. Which is nice. It is. And we have a wonderful spa on our ships, um, an incredible exercise room. If you, I never go in the exercise room. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you? No, it's a no. cruise, right? Yeah, it's my it's vacation. It's fun. Right. I looked at it. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, we have about a minute right now. What are some other um, specials that are going on? Or is that really it, the two for one you know, or the prices? Besides the two for ones, right. look at my notes. Um, <laughs> there's some 10-day Tahiti's, several dates that start from $704. Wow, 10 day cruise. that's really great. It's that's for the cruise. Add your air to that. It's it's a deal. That's great. Good that's thing about great. Renaissance, these are all. They have eight brand new ships with the 700 passengers. And again, it's not go to dinner at six, go at eight. It's just Whatever. whenever you want. It gives you the luxury of a more expensive product at a great value. 
<laughs> and I think the viewers are sick of hearing me when I went to Tahiti, how wonderful it was. Yeah, but what a Tahiti great time. Sounds so good right now. <laughs> it is the best. It's the best place to go decompress. I mean, it's just total relaxation. Reed being the water, and the, and the islands are what Hawaii was maybe 40 years ago. Right. They're so pristine. Very, it's just the best. Very blue, very yes. everything, yes. very the best. Absolutely. It sounds wonderful, and for $700 or two for one, you can't beat that because when you talk about some of the cruises now with other places, it's way up in the thousands, high thousands. Yes. So this is fantastic, and Absolutely. you guys have a wonderful reputation. So, of course, as always, thank you for joining us, well, and Sandy, thank you. thank you for coming on Thanks. as well. And if you'd like to know more, of course, you can click on our website at kvbc.com and just check some stuff out there for the cruises as well. Scott? All right, thank you. It was a record-breaking drum roll, literally. Come up, coming up, find out just how many people it took to break this world record. No record high temperatures today, just a bit on the warm side. We'll have your complete forecast and the answer to the Frederick's Fact. It's up next here on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. Malaysian drummers recently gathered to break a national record, pounding, beating, and striking various drums during a colorful festival. A group played mostly a variety of drums and were accompanied by percussionists from China, India, as well as Thailand. Some 80,000 locals and tourists have flooded the stadium venue uh, to watch the impressive festival performers. It looks beautiful. Colorful. That was the right word. Absolutely. Colorful indeed. And uh, we marched to our, our well, different. Drum different beat here in the valley, especially when it comes to the weather. You do? Well, <laughs> we all that's do. no secret. <laughs> and John Fredericks is no uh, strange with that either, Johnny. <laughs> March into the beat of a different drum, absolutely right there. <laughs> As we uh, look back up the strip and the beautiful palm trees, and this is actually just uh, looking down from our Mandalay Bay cam, getting a little bit of a shake, rattle, and roll there. 98 degrees, 14 percent humidity, winds east at 9, barometer falling to 999. Other numbers uh, look like this, a little bit uh, further out, 30, no, that's not correct. It's not 35 up on the mountain, all these Ooh, numbers. Get the mittens. Uh, I thought I'd save those, but apparently I didn't. My <laughs> Get the mittens. Thank you, Shara. <laughs> 100 Henderson, 99 East Las Vegas, 99 at the Strip, 94 Spring Valley, 93 Summerlin. And in case you're wondering, Franny called in and said it was uh, just below 100 degrees over the hump and prop. It's in the low to mid-70s up on the mountain and uh, up to the north in... Uh, <laughs> In Mesquite, it's uh, just over 100 degrees, and it's about 106 right now in Laughlin. Anyway, we'll get the numbers right. Here's your forecast for today. Uh, by break time, we'll be about 103. Somewhere this afternoon, around 5 o'clock or so, we'll top out about 106. We're still going to be in the upper 90s at must-see TV time. And the winds are going to be typical on these warm summer days out of the southwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now, the record high for today, so back in 61, is 113. No threat there. Yesterday, 104. The average is now 102. It continues to creep up before it maxes out right around 107 degrees. That's about our hottest daily average. Air quality, moderate. Yeah, a little dusty out there. We get that inversion layer trapping some of the uh, air and the junk over the top of the valley. We need something to kick it out. We are going to have some breezes pick up in the next couple of days, but nothing significant. 98 here, 97 Barstow, 71 in Los Angeles. Remember, that's at LAX, right along the coastal areas there where they get that marine influence. Last half hour, I talked about severe weather developing across much of the country's eastern half, and we do have several watches and warnings out right now. These are severe thunderstorm warnings for a good chunk of the uh, northeastern corridor. Uh, New York could see some strong and severe storms, and we've got a tornado warning in effect for portions of northeastern North Dakota right now. Once again, as I mentioned last half hour, Dr. Jim Sieber will have a complete update during First News 3 at 4. 106 for us today, 107 Phoenix, 94 at Burbank, and very warm, sticky, and humid across much of the east. Do want to give you a quick reminder, folks, on this water Wednesday, we'll call it. Uh, during the entire summer, you want to water your lawn seven days a week, three times a day, four minutes, just four minutes each watering, and please do so between the hours of 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. And compliments of the Southern Nevada Water Authority, I'm going to give our uh, winner of the Fredericks Fact a bonus prize from them. 80 up on the mountain, just a typical ridge breeze, beautiful, but just downright hot from the lake to Laughlin, once again, somewhere around 110 to 113 in those areas. Yep. 
And uh, summer officially, in case you're wondering, summer officially starts tomorrow morning at 1238 a.m. our time. 106 here today, 108 tomorrow, 108, 106. Hey, a little bit of a cooling trend for the weekend. There you go. All right. Life is all about having something to look forward to. It is the only food that does not spoil. Well, I am not a chef. I don't even claim to be one. I can burn water in the microwave, but I have been told that it is honey. Honey. Okay. Honey. The only that food that does not spoil. Yep. Apparently, archaeologists have actually uncovered, like, fossilized honey, and it's still okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'd eat it. Anyway, but Marvin Doctor had the correct answer. He's got dinner for two at Tony Roma's brand-new location over at Sahara and um, Decatur. Two tickets to see Sheena Easton. And you and I were talking about this, and you said it's supposed to be a phenomenal show. It's gotten uh, great reviews. Everybody, well, they moved her to a, the bigger showroom right. over at the Hilton because it's just selling out. Uh, and also, from the Southern Nevada Water Authority, we're going to give Marvin this bonus prize. From the uh, Water Authority, reminds you, please, save water, save energy this summer. Very nice. Very All right. Thank you, John Fredericks. How does a round trip air for two and four nights stay at the Four Seasons in London sound? Wow. Pretty good. Yeah, Very good. Wonderful. Yeah. It's great escapes with the veranda at the Four Seasons. And up next, we'll have afternoon tea and some fine pastries along with your chance to win a great getaway and tell you how you can enter in the contest. That's on next on News 3, where news comes first. Today on First News 3 at 4, find out what unemployment and income have to do with heart disease. And are you born with the love to ride roller coasters or do you learn to love them? Why scientists say genetics may play a role for coaster fanatics. Plus, we'll show you four things you need to do to keep your tires safe to drive on. That's all coming up today on First News 3 at 4. Afternoon tea with the veranda at the Four Seasons. Scott joins the executive chef and pastry chef with more on what Great Escapes is all about. Scott? Thank you very much, Cher. I'm here with uh, pastry chef Jean-Luc Dahl. Thank you very much right. for stopping by. This yeah. is a great opportunity for everyone here. The veranda at Four Seasons, of course, which is in the same general building as uh, Mandalay Bay, but down on the first floor of the veranda, uh, if you just eat there, you're automatically entered in the month of June for a three-night, four-day, all-expense-paid trip to London, to the Four Seasons in London. That's correct. Uh, it's part of our Great Escape program, uh, where we feature in the month of June the uh, English promotion, and in conjunc conjunction with Virgin Atlantic Airlines, we're offering and uh, our sister properties, the Four Seasons London, we offer a package, and uh, all you have to do is to come to the veranda, uh, eat, enjoy dinner, and you're eligible to win. Uh, if you've not eaten at the veranda, then you're missing out. This is a great uh, opportunity to have a great meal, and then Hey, you're entered in a, in a trip uh, giveaway. In March, there was a giveaway to Ireland, of course, yeah. and with St. Patrick's Day. Coming up in September, a giveaway to Hawaii to the Four Seasons. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then in December, one for San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. But any day during the month of June, if you eat at the veranda, you are entered. Afternoon tea, of course, pastries. You do amazing things with pastries. And one of the uh, things we're going to be putting together today Maybe you can take us through this. Yeah, what I'm going to show you today is a traditional uh, English scone uh, with black currants, which is a classic in part of the uh, English afternoon tea. So what I have for the scones, um, I have four ounces of sugar, which I'm going to put in a mixer, along with uh, four ounces of butter. So I put that in it. Then I will slowly cream this until all the ingredients are combined. Just cream it long enough to make sure both ingredients are combined. In, into this, I'm going to scrape it a little bit, add four ounces of uh, all-purpose flour with three-quarter ounce of uh, baking powder. I'll have some bread flour, which add eight ounces of this. And along with this, I have 12 ounces of uh, heavy cream. Mm -hmm which, I mean, all the ingredients needed for the scones. I'm going to stir that a little bit by hand and making sure I scrape the bottom of the bowl and put it back in the mixer. So what is it with Europeans and uh, pastries that there's this love affair with pastries? 
Yeah, it several can't... countries in in Europe. Yeah, um, it's one thing we always had like coffee in the afternoon and always uh, uh, the mothers at home were cooking or baking something, you know. And it was uh, usually when the kids came from school around four o'clock in the afternoon, then with coffee and pastries, and that's how it grew on us. There you, know? you go. So what I have here, I added all the flowers, the cream, and mixed it. Important is not to over mix it. And I have two and a half ounces of uh, good quality currants, which I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to slowly mix it again. And at this point, I will take it out of the machine, put it on my working bench. And again, the key is not to overmix it. Exactly. If you overmix it, you're going to have a very dense dough, and your scones are going to be heavy mm -hmm. and not as light as they should be. I have about 45 seconds. Yeah, exactly. The whole process would take about a minute once you have all your ingredients scaled. Uh, remove the dough on the table. I like so. Now, afternoon tea is something that the veranda does for those of you who would like uh, to go have afternoon tea. You can go get that feel of the veranda, the Four Seasons. And again, if you dine at the Four Seasons, you're automatically entered in the Great Escapes getaway trip uh, to London any uh, day if you eat there for the month of June. And uh, Jean-Luc, we appreciate you stopping by for this. And you're going to bring this together. You roll this out? Yeah, I'm uh, quickly going to roll this out. You roll it out to about three, three quarter of an inch to about half an inch. Like so. Thanks for watching, everyone. John Luke, thanks for stopping yeah, by. Yeah, thank we you. Appreciate it. Right.